It's here I am again, another midnight earthquake. Uh, last night it was 6.7 earthquake that uh, we had. I forgot where it was at even now, off the top of my head. Ascension Island, that's right, Ascension Island. Uh, tonight we just had a 6.4. Very powerful earthquake has hit the Fiji Islands. 6.4. Tonight, same time as the 6.7 hit last night on Ascension Islands. Now, if you remember what I told you, Gil Brazard, two nights ago, made this prediction that because of this total solar eclipse, the pressure that it puts on the Earth, when the eclipse happens, it's going to slow the Earth for one to two seconds, and that... That's, that slowing of the earth for one to two seconds will put enormous pressure on the core and the crust of the earth, according to Gil Brazard. And he said two, two nights ago, which would have been the 16th of August, he said from the 16th of August till the 4th of September, the pressure from the uh, eclipse before it happens and even after it's done, the total pressure because of the moon's proximity to the earth and sun during this span of period of time will put enormous pressure on the earth and watch for earthquakes to happen. And he said this on the 16th at 6.35 p.m. Eastern time on the 16th. And on the 17th, we had a 6.7 earthquake hit Ascension Island last night, and tonight we've just had a 6.4 hit the Fiji Islands. So, guys, seriously, we've got a situation. Uh, something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. And I'm here in Boise, Idaho. We've had a tremendous day today. The speakers were incredible. Uh, tremendous messages were all day long was delivered from Pastor Carl Gallops, um, <clears throat> uh, who is, of course, a renowned best-selling author and pastor there in Florida for 30 years and has his own FM radio broadcast, uh, had a powerful word. And then uh, Derek Gilbert uh, just, just did a tremendous job bringing out all of the gods of the Old Testament, how that, uh, and he called the sermon Bad Moon Rising, and how that those gods all are part of the formation of Islam. A tremendous presentation. I got to give him a lot of credit. He did a great job in bringing it forward. L.A. Marzulli is just, as he always is, fabulous. Uh, he, the guy should be in a comedian, really. He really should be a Christian comedian. He's just unbelievable. He did a great job bringing out the message on the Nephilim and the Giants, and their timely exposure. And then Russ Dizdar, what can I say? He was unbelievable tonight. And I mean, they were begging him to not stop, okay? Uh, it was a tremendous message he preached on in the twilight of a fallen civilization. But man, he not only brought out all the demonic and the dark side and Satan's uh, plot to try to destroy humanity, but he brought out the power we have in Christ Jesus when Im the immortals that we become as part of the resurrected uh, body of Christ. I mean, really, it was a tremendous message by Russ Dizdar, capping off a great day, and uh, we ministered to people in prayer uh, after that. Uh, so really a great time. Tomorrow's going to be an awesome day. Uh, a lot of great uh, messages will be preached. Coach Dave Dudemeyer, Josh Tolley, Dr. Michael Lake, then Michael Bodia, and then I'll be preaching to finish up the nightcap with the total eclipse of the sun, S-O-N. So we look forward to a great day in the Lord, and then I'll be giving an altar call also at the end of the uh, message. Uh, then Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, we'll be baptizing people, and there's a lot of folks getting baptized. And so we're expecting a tremendous, tremendous time tomorrow and Sunday morning. And then Scotty Clark brings forth his message on Revelation 12 after the baptisms on Sunday. So everybody's looking forward to it. There's some also some workshops and things that's going to be going on. 
and Pastor Casper is going to be speaking also. Uh, so there's just some great, great stuff coming up the rest of the weekend here in Boise, Idaho. Uh, love everybody out there. Praise God. A lot of folks are getting their orders in for the Total Eclipse of the Sun, S-O-N, and that's our new DVD. And so, uh, God bless you. We will be shipping all of those out, all of them out, on the 29th, okay, all in one day. They're all going to go out. All right, we love all you guys. Hey, keep praying for us. Pray for me because I have to be uh, ready to bring forth a, the word of the Lord tomorrow night. I really need your prayers. And... Uh, that many people can be saved and healed and delivered and set free. Because you know what? we got to get people saved. And that's what Russ Dizdar was trying to say. Church, it is time. We have to get out there and win people to Christ. This is the end time harvest, folks. This is the end time harvest. So God bless all of you. Remember, Fiji had a powerful 6.4 earthquake. We don't think there's going to be any dangers, though, for a tsunami or anything like that. But Again, the earth is shaking and quaking, and keep an eye on this triple threat uh, that uh, these storms that are out there uh, in the Atlantic. All right, also pray for the President of the United States. He continues to have pressure building all around him. The media is on his case. Oh, it's because, as Russ Dizdar said tonight, it's because Lucifer is trying to destroy America. And one way would be to try to bring down the President of the United States. And he wants us to pray. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We have more current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Shalom, shalom, shalom to all of you. Pray for Fiji tonight. Pray for Fiji tonight. Praise God. Also the attacks in uh, Finland again. And pray for, Port, uh, uh, for Spain. Pray for Spain from what happened yesterday. So we got a lot to pray about. Pray one for another. Are you serious?
It was one of the strongest earthquakes ever measured, and security cameras captured its 90 terrifying seconds. It struck in the middle of the night. Chileans struggled to get out of buildings, some in just their pajamas. Paula Saez, a relief worker just back from Haiti, spoke with us from Chile's capital, Santiago. There's a lot of people screaming in the streets. Everybody's walking and screaming names of people, uh, trying to look if they're safe. At dawn, the extent of the devastation came into focus. In Concepcion, Chile's second largest city, 70 miles from the epicenter, the earth opened up, tearing apart asphalt and even buildings, toppling bridges, and tossing cars from an overpass. The quake rumbled almost 22 miles below the surface. An 8.8 .8 earthquake is more powerful than the largest nuclear bomb ever tested. Paul Caruso of the U.S. Geological Survey told us Chile's quake was much bigger than the one that rocked Haiti just last month, releasing 500 times more energy. If the epicenter was near a, a populated town, the town would be utterly destroyed. Um, fortunately, in this case, the epicenter was off the coast, and uh, the people in Chile have experience with earthquakes, and they're well prepared for this one. Chile's president told reporters the priority is to deal with the injured and homeless. We're asking everybody to stay calm, to stay patient, she said. We reached Cecilia Lagos at her computer. It was absolutely frightening, absolutely terrifying. I really thought it was the end of the world. The quake temporarily stopped work at some oil refineries and copper mines in Chile, and according to the government, damaged up to half a million homes. Mm -hmm. Russ?